nature, and, uh, and these are uh, Nebuch, uh, a crying scene. A lot of the things that uh, Hever Kedisha does, the, first of all, the fact that it's called Hever Kedisha, where does it come from? Why is it, uh, why is it known as Hever Kedisha? Because you're dealing with uh, Kedoshim. You're dealing with people who are nifter, and any Jew that passes away is a Kaddish. So you can think that the Hever is because they do holy work, what work is it? It's to bring a person to Kfura, and most of the things that, most of the, uh, the, the, the Minhagim that we have, when I say Minhagim, is because most of it is Minhagim. Very little of it is, is actually based on Psukim. Uh, it's all based on Psukim, but I'm saying most of the, most of the things that a Hever Kedisha does is based on, especially coming from the Rizal's yard site, is based on, on the Mavri Yabek, which was, a, uh, which was um, an Italian sage. Uh, and he, um, he authored the, the Mavri Yabek. He was, a, he was a Talmud, some say of the Ramak, but some say, with, with the research that I, that I came up with, is that it wasn't the Ramak, it was the Yisrael Surug, which was a Chavar of Reb Chaim Vital. Um, the famous story, I don't know if you're familiar with this, and my, this, is my, this is only my take. And what I was able to, uh, for the years that I'm in Chavik and I'd like to research the subject, is that um, my opinion, again, is that, um, is that most, most of what he learned and he wrote was from Darizal. And it comes from, so in other words, almost every Chavik that does things is based on Kabbalah, based on, 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 on the Yisoyed, on the Yisoyed of a Torah. And um, just to, to digress, there's a famous story of the Arizal that he was going to be in Purnacherim by, some say, his great uncle uh, 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 from Lublin. Some say he wasn't a great uncle, it was, uh, it was, it was a, a distant relative. Uh, that he heard that the Arizal is, is disseminating, he said this at and he wanted to put him in the and, um, and he sent Reb Chaim Vital and uh, Israel Sirug to go speak to uh, the, 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 the Rav of Lublin and to show him, to tell him that the, the Arizal is not doing anything wrong. He prepared for them um, a special cakes, special chalas that they make in Tzvas and they make in at Yisrael, wrapped them in, 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 in cloth, and um, he sent them on a, on a cloud. Are you familiar with the story? Anybody? So he sent them on a cloud, and it's a fascinating story actually, and he sent them on a cloud and they arrived right by Mincha in Lublin. They come in and they look like Svardash, they dress like Svardash, they look like, and they had a very holy countenance on them. And they came in, they walked into to Mincha, they come into Mincha and made a stir, they're, 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 they're classed upon them. You know, they, they looked very distinguished people, and they looked like, obviously, from Eretz Yisrael, and they just arrived and it looked, uh, and um, right after the Mincha, they went over to the Rav, and the Rav, and they said to, they said, um, they're here from Eretz Yisrael, and they're here on behalf of Darizal, that you, we know that you want to put them in a Cherem, and um, to prove that who we are, that, uh, and that there is all such a real thing, that he sent us on a cloud, and here we have challah, we have bread uh, that, that, that's still warm. So he said, okay, he would like them, he would like them to, to, to teach them a uh, shtickle from the Arizal, from the Tayre, from, the from Kabbalah. From, so he said, okay, we're going to go into a, a dark, we're going to go into a basement, we can't do it in front of everybody, it's these are special, special Tayres. So they went into the basement, and they, um, they were Megala, they were Megala, the site of the title of the, the, the Kabbalah Sarizal, and the whole room filled up with, 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 with oil, with light, and he realized right away that this is a whole different story, it's, 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 it's holy, it's, it's uh, and he, he, he said that from, you know, changed his mind, and he's not going to do any, he's not going to put him in Cherem, and he became a big a proponent, a big, a big uh, chassid of uh, uh, Dari. These two people did not, these two Talmidim did not want to go to Eretz Yisrael. They didn't want to leave. They didn't want to do this mission. Because they realized, you know, getting involved with it, uh, a big, a big Paisek, uh, getting, uh, getting involved in the politics of things, uh, they knew that this could be a pay this, you know. So the Rizal, did, they didn't want to do this trip. Rizal said, okay, if you, I'll give you a reward. Not far from the town of Lublin, there's, a, there's a, every generation has to have a Mashiach. And the current Mashiach is living 20 kilometers outside of Lublin. And, uh, and after you finish your, your mission, you can, you can go to this guy's house and you can see the Mashiach of that time. Because every generation, if there's Zoyche, this guy has to be ready to roll. And uh, so that for that, they wanted it. So they went, after they, they succeeded in their mission, so they went to the, to the next town over. 
and they went and they, and they started asking around for this yid, and no one ever heard of it. So they went to the rav, and the rav said he, he'll help them. He'll help them, and they had to divulge why they were looking for him. And the rav was very fascinated himself. He said, "That's the Mashiach in my in my in my territory." So he. So they were looking, looking, until they found the steps. I heard there was a shack in the corner and in, 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 in the forest that, 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 that maybe it's him, maybe they, they haven't seen him, but they know someone lives there. So they knock on the door and there's a lady opens up the door and uh, they, they see it's a bare room. It's, it's mamish, a rickety, they have a chair too and a, a small table. And um, to, to, there's a bed and a ligdat naid and he's nebach, he's sickly and and they come and ask him if it was his name. He said, yeah, the wife said, this is him. And he's a sickly person. And he's been lying in bed like this for a long time. So they went over to him and they said, we're here from the, we're here from the Rizal and we, we know that you're the Mashiach. So he says, oh, the Rizal with all his, with, with, with his, with his revelations, what he does is, with his galas of his this, he didn't do me any favors. And he didn't do, he didn't do any favors. So um, I, I'll let you know that, um, that, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. In other words, my time is up. Because of what Arizal uh, told you who I am, that means I'm, I have to prepare for my, uh, for my passing. And he told Rav Chaim Vital Yisrael Struk exactly how to prepare him, that he wanted them to prepare him for his tahara, for his kfura, for the albasha, for everything. And he told them everything that he wanted them to do. Now, they did. They did. And... Um, before the 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 before the first world war, the story is brought down um, that they they re that that Metzeva was still visible. The Metzeva of this individual was still visible in in Lublin. Anyways, it says, it says on the yeah 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 yeah. It says that he was. It says on, on the Metzeva that uh, that this was a result that testified that he was the Mashiach of his time. Uh, obviously, it wasn't Zeicher so. Um, Chaim Tal went back to Yisrael, went back to Yisrael, and Yisrael sort of remained, and he was one who was influential in in making the Rizal's Torahs spread out in in Europe, and uh, that's how he went. To, he went. He was in Italy. He was all over, and he was able to spread. To, uh, sorry, so so um, the Marvi Yabak gets all his things. This is my connection that I'm putting. I mean, so so you can't uh, you know hold me to it. I'm just saying that. Yisrael, the, the, Yisrael Surug had a Talmud that ended up writing Marva Yabak, and this is a, you know, so everything, the Minhagim that he writes is from someone that did a Tahara on the Mashiach of his generation. So, and this is like, look, that everybody, every Sefer that's written today and from then on from, is, is taken from um, the Marva Yabak. The Marva Yabak was quite large and it was condensed to make it easier for Chavik to, to to more practical. There was a lot of Yisraelistic stuff over there. So, uh, so in a practical sense, Chaver is, it, it's, I think, a, a mitzvah that puts the two worlds together. I mean, something so holy and so spiritual, so, so um, um, I don't know, say the way, the word, the way voodoo, um, well, that's not a nice word to say, but something a little bit more esoterical, such a, a holy thing to do, but yet it's, it's coupled with the most practical thing. Push it, simple, bring someone to Kfur. You, you, have to, you have to have, you can't have someone that doesn't, uh, that has a, a broken back. You have to have a that's going to be able to wash and do our chit, uh, the, the, the and there's a, there's a there's physical, push it physical. So the, it has the, it has the maila of a mitzvah that you have, the gecht, the himmel, but you have to be in the earth, you have to be in Bizman and Mokim, so, uh, so to, to cross that, uh, that bridge. In general, just before um, before uh, uh, any 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 statements or anything like that, any minig that you're going to go to or you're going to find, um, if you go to a town, and I'm sure a lot of you're going to go on shluchas, and you're going to have to be involved in this part of Jewish life cycle, uh, uh, taharas, that whatever Chaver Kedisha is doing, wherever you are, most likely they're doing it okay. There's you can't say, well, I did, I only saw it in Crown Heights. The Lubavitch Chaver Kedisha does it this minig. Everybody's doing their minig, and there's a, they have a Kabbalah from previous generations, unless it's like really a reform, a conservative that ran the Chavik Edisha for many years, and uh, seeped in a couple of things. But more or less, th it's quite simple. There's three points to bringing a Yid to, yid, uh, to, to Kfuris Yisrael. There is the Rechitza, 
washing, uh, washing the nifter, the tahara, to do tishakab, and majority of the places you're going to go to, I'm saying majority, 99% of the places that, uh, that uh, the buried Jewish people do not have a mikveh. New York is unique, we have a mikveh. Um, big cities, Chicago just got a mitz, just got a mikveh. I mean, Chicago is a, a, a big Jewish community. Uh, so there's many, many big cities. Um, and Ramesha writes actually that, uh, Ramesha, I'm, say Ramesha, I'm talking about Ramesha um, uh, uh, Feinstein, he writes that he doesn't agree with the fact that they should start making mikvahs, because in Israel there was a big push to streamline it to do to make mikvahs, and he writes that it's not the best idea because he feels that uh, it's going to be expensive. You don't need it. You can do tishikabim. Tishikabim is three buckets. Uh, what, how much does it cost to do three? About a mikvah to, cre to create a mikvah to make a kosher mikvah. There's thousands of dollars to push it to make a mikvah that uh, that should have um, that should be kosher. So he said that it's going to be it's going to be prohibitive. That it's going to raise the cost of a, of a, of a kvurus yisrael, and that will be a problem. So, uh, so he doesn't, and it happens to be by Beis Arav, by us anyways, I'm saying Beis Arav was always Tisha Kab and it was not a Dafka, not a Mikveh. But practically speaking, it's a lot easier to do it in a Mikveh. And, and anybody that's in New York, that gets buried from, in New York, and there's a tire in New York, the default is, to, uh, is, is a Mikveh. It's simple, it's quicker, it's easier, and, and so on. The Rechitze itself, the Rechitze itself, they're, uh, they're, they're, uh, uh, what are you trying to accomplish in Rechitza? So there's a practical level of Rechitza and then there's a little bit more spiritual. So let's talk about the practical. Practical is, um, the Ramo writes that uh, he, he wanted that they should wash him, that uh, they should wash him uh, 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 for, for Tahara. Uh, they, he writes that they should do the way he prepared for Shabbos. Rechitza, the same way you prepare for Shabbos, you take off all you take off all dirt or any kind of uh, 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 the way you wash for Shabbos, because the idea is that uh, the nifter is going in the Shabbos, is going to Shabbos, is going to return. He's going to touch of his, he's returning. He's going to Shabbos uh, and uh, and he's uh, so that's that's the idea. But practically speaking, it's to wash the body that it should be able to. And this is also brought down, even though that it's not as holy sounding. Pashat, if, if a person smells, you're not going to have a Chavah Kedisha. You want people to do this mitzvah, so you want them to push it. No, so you, you wash the person so that can be, you can have a Levaya, that people can, can sukum and they can help, they can do. But if a person is, especially these are, th these are days that, are, that didn't, have, they didn't have refrigeration, didn't have any kind of chemicals or, or dry ice, so it was, especially in the summertime, in, 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 it, it would be very difficult to do, to, to do this mitzvah. So if you wash someone, it gives them a chance to, you know, to get rid of the, the dirt and the smell. So melachnish up from such a. So if you if you want to be a simple person, in have a condition. It's simple. That's 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 why you do rechitza. It's actually brought down in in Svarim that uh, the, the rechitza is does a lot more of a spiritual thing since we're chassidim and we like the, the you know the the, the, the side of things. The, the, it says that the rechitz and the tahara make make the person forget. That's that's a mechanism for the person to actually go to to Olam Amis, to forget about the the, 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 the gashmias. So the washing is like you're washing away his uh, the tumma of of of, of, uh, of the world of the world, and it helps the neshama go to, to to become. So that's a little that's a whole different story of rechitz. Rechitz is not just a stam as a you know what happens if the person doesn't smell. And if a person does not that dirty, he came and he's clean. So why well, you wouldn't need a rechitze? So there's a, there's other reasons for rechitze. So it, regardless if the person's clean or not, we do rechitze because of the spiritual reasons as well. There is a question in regards to so the rechitze. There is a question about a chetzitze. Is it ma'akav or not? If you do a chitze, if you have a, a bandage. Or, or whatever, whatever it is that if you put, do tisha kabin, or you put it in, in the mikveh, is that is that ruin the tahara? In other words, the only way you can do a tahara or tisha kabin is if you take away all chetzitzes. The answer, the truth of the answer is no. Chetzitzes are not ma'ak if it doesn't doesn't ruin the tahara itself. So, so, but what we try to do, especially the chavikdish that we come from. I say chavikdish we come from. There's there are different menhagim. 
Svardim have their minig, especially the Syrians. They do very little rechitza. They do a rechitza with just, mama just put a water on him and they don't care about anything else. They don't, they don't they're not makbid about dam. Uh, they're to hire us for 15 minutes. I mean, I've seen them do it in less than that. Uh, very, very, very minimal, but that's their minig. Then there's a minig from the, from the, from the they called it the rise, the, 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 um, the yekis. The, the, German, the German Jews, they, they, they weren't makbid too much on, on chetzitzis, on things of that nature. Happens to be the Russians, the Polish, the Hungarians, they, the, which is our chavrik dishes, and practically these are the chavrik dishes that adopted throughout the world, is that kind of a, uh, that kind of a chavrik dishes that we're, we are makbid in blood, we're makbid in the chetzitzah, and all that stuff, that we make sure that, uh, that uh, when a person is, uh, gets to the tahara, that it, there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing on the guf. By the way, if you, you can feel free to interrupt me to ask me a question if you have or make a comment. It's a, it's a, right away, so fast. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. How does washing go together with the fact that you have to bury everything? What was that? How does washing go together with the fact that you have to bury all the blood and all the... You have to bury the blood. Now, there's a, there's, there's, there, when you say uh, burying blood, that's an argument. Uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, that even though in Eretz they have in Zaka, they're so makbid on the blood and they take all the pieces and things, that there's certain chavidish in Eretz Yisrael, but particularly in Yishalayim, um, I don't know if this is going viral or anything, I don't know, not to make it go viral, that they're not so makbid, only dam uh, from the leif. In other words, if it's a scratch on the hand and blood comes from the hand, that blood is not real considered the dam alev, you know, the life source of blood. But if it comes from... Why is all those things that... Okay, so what we are very makbid in, what the Chavah Gidish is, not only Lubavitch, I'm thinking, when I'm saying Chavah uh, Gidish is in, 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 in New York, or for that matter, all over the United States or, or, or the world, they're makbid on all kind of blood. Any blood, you're going to bury the person. So if you're taking out any kind of tube, or any kind of intravenous, or any kind of uh, a catheter or, or, or that, that, that comes with, that has blood on it, which is most probably going to have a little bit, you're going to be burying that. But, um, but, but what happens if you take a bandage off and there is hair on it? Some a small little piece of hair. We're not makbid to, 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 to bury it. Some chavar gedishes are makbid to bury. Uh, why not? Put it into the bag. Or that there's going to be blood. But it, it happens to be in this chavar gedish over here. It depends on on the reisha dagel, the guy who runs the who's who's the run, who's running the show. But most, if it's no, if there's if there's not no blood on it, there's no reason to, to bury it. Exactly. You're rinsing off. When, you, when, you, when, when you're rinsing off blood, you have to be careful how to do it because if you're rinsing off, you're washing off across the blood. That what you're washing off, the, 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 the napkin that you're using or the, the cloth that you're using, that has to be buried. That's going to be buried. So when you're washing off the blood, you, have to, you can't just wash and, and the blood drains away. You have, to, you have to have that balance of when you're scrubbing it away, you have to, you have to make sure that it's, you're, not, you're not wasting that. Um, but you're, well, you, ha you want to wash. The secondary is okay. The blood goes a little bit, you know, goes on the table. You'll you'll clean it up, but you want to clean the goof as as, be, as best as possible. <coughs> you're not washing like a shower; you're just cleaning it. You're washing him, sponge. What you would call a sponge bath. Sponge, sponge bath. You know, um, there are some some chavurah that don't use soap at all. You just use water, warm water. Some use cold water, and you don't bother with soap. Uh, when I started on Chavik Dishu, no one used it in Crown Heights. We didn't use soap at all, at all, at all, at all. Never used soap. Never. Ne and it happened to be that, um, uh, you know, like quite a few years, uh, the different, uh, different, different people are in Chavik Dishu, come from different training, and uh, it's harder not to use with, it's easier to use with soap, depends on if when you have to use soap. So the default is we don't use soap unless you have to. Unless you sound like the, you come in like a chili, you just lather it, you know, you take, you take a washcloth with soap and you wash. Unless there's areas that you need to wash and it's very crusted and you need to scrub it off, or if there's a, um, well now you have people who have uh, bandages on that are, that are, that uh, when you take them off, there's, um, they're just like anybody has a, a, a band-aid on themselves and they take it off there's if you have a bandage is on for like a couple days and it got wet it leaves a little bit of a of um 
of gum, I don't know what you call it, like a little bit of uh, glue, or, you know, it gets, uh, so you, it's hard to take that off, so you need to scrub. So there's different mechanisms that the Chavik dishes have, that the funeral homes have, whether it is, uh, it's, uh, there, there's, there's peroxide, or, or different alcohols, or different kind of soaps. So you try your best to take, the, to take that off. So, to begin with, you want the, the Chavik Dish, uh, they, when you go into when you when when one goes into a tahara, all the tefillahs that are said are are um, are to depict from uh, that, that that the person's a kaddish, the person's a, a, is is a holy person. Rishi Kazim Poz, you're speaking about the the Ivarim, you're washing. Well, the, uh, I digress. If you go back, the earliest time of rechitza. Is is um, and and of, it, of that tahara is uh, Reb Hillel, Reb, uh, It comes from from Reb Hillel, uh, not Paraja. Uh, now the question is: was it was it, uh, was it was it the Hillel Zokin? Was it was it really the Hillel Zokin, or was it not him? It was another Hillel? But the bottom line is, he writes over there a whole bunch of uh, ways of of uh, of uh, what the rechitz and the tahara should be. And um, that's that's the early one of the earliest sources uh, that we have from that Gemara. Um, I think it's the Gemara in Shabbos, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there, there, there is when the Chavik Edisha comes and sees an individual. You, you first thing you do is you do a shkava, which is you put the person on the ground. And you don't put them directly on the ground. There's a, you put a little bit of a kash. You put a little bit of, a, of, of, of a straw that the person shouldn't be directly on the floor, even though he's not anyways in a, wrapped in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a body bag or whatever it is. But you put him down, and you, make some, you, say, you say some tefillahs. <clears throat> the tefillahs that we say are pretty much bundled all together. And most Chavagadishas, almost all Chavagadishas say the same tefillahs. We say it a little bit different. There's a, there's, there's a, there's a Rebbein that we start with. That's from the Mavi Yavik, but it, it has in there, um, you, uh, you say the word Rachamim, you say the word Rachamim, you say it seven times. Certain, certain Chavagadishas say it certain ways, but uh, that comes from that there is a number of ways. There used to be that the, when they washed, when they, when they washed, they washed every aver separately. And every aver had a, a, a trilla to do it, which, which would take you who knows how long. It would take you over an hour and a half to just do the rechitze. So that is only done for gedele, gedele. We're talking about from the Rishonim that would, would write that kind of a rechitze. Today, no one does that rechitze. Um, you know, even, even uh, you know, Tanoim and Amaroim, they would say, oh, they get, they get such a tahara. They get such a rechitze and such a tahara. But today, and they had these different tefillahs, and they were, uh, but uh, today, it's, we, we bundle the, the, the tefillahs together. You start with one, that's called the Rebbein Shalaylam, and in there we say seven, uh, seven times the because it has you're talking about the, the heads, the two arms, the 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 the, the, the two legs. So it refers to seven different devarim that uh, that we refer to, and we don't even know which one it refers to unless you learn the svarim inside. You'll know exactly the correlation between this tefillah and that. So, but that's that's not what a regular chavagadish guy you stop on the street he would know, wouldn't know what I just said because he just has these tefillahs and that's that's what it is as he state. Um, you. There are certain chavik dishes do this certain times of the of the of the tariff. You start off by asking him mechila. You have his name, and you say, "I'm asking mechila. We're only doing this for you covered. We're trying to bring you to Kurosh Yisrael. Whatever we're going to do, we're asking mechila that if we we you know, not not doing it for any kind of design or anything like that. And um, and we speak to the nifter. We do it in the beginning. You know, it depends. Even in even in this chaver in Crown Heights, there's uh, certain people who run the chavik, uh, run their group, so they do it certain times. A lot of from the chaver when I say from the meaning veltish chaver they do it, they do it after the rechitzah before the tahara. That's when they stop and they they make like a, an announcement. This, these are these are nuances that, that if you're going to go to a town and they're going to ask you to help in a chavik dish and they did something that you weren't trained in Crown Heights if you ever went to one one or, one or a couple of tahras, it, these are not things that oh my goodness you have to go crazy and change these are it, 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 it's as long as it's done and, and and like I started to begin with 
that any form and any chavik dish that you go to, what they're doing is miserably right, because what they're doing is they're washing the dirt off the body, they're doing tishakabin, and they're doing the, the halbasha. And how, how much different can you get? It's, 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 so there's the ways how you do tefira, how you tie certain things and you twist it a certain amount. So there's different, that's different kind of menhagim. Um, now, getting back to what, what, what we're starting with is the, in terms of the rechitza, the technical part of it is that since today is day and age that there are a lot of people come from the hospital, if they come from a hospital, most people die in a hospital, average, is they die in a hospital, they're dying with, with tubes. They're dying with, with, um, in, with a lot of um, medical devices attached. The default button should be, if you don't know the outcome of where this goes or how this, what you're doing, leave it alone. Because again, a, 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 a chetzitze for a tahara is not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. It's not a problem. So notice, you're not taking it off because of, the, of a chetzitze. So if you can't take it off because you're not sure, because you're going to have, you're going to lose more than you gain if you take out this tube and all of a sudden you didn't realize it's from a, an artery and you're not going to be able to stop the bleeding. You're going to lose the guy's blood and it's going to be, a, then you won't be able to do anything. So that would be a problem. So better not, better don't take something out and let that be a little bit of a chetzitza better than, than, than the blood loss and, uh, and not going to be able to, to, to bring him, put him into to, to a, to a, to clean tachichim. So that you have to be uh, trained uh, as best uh, with, with people who are, who are behavent and uh, who know how to take certain things out and how to take it out and what's worth to take out, what's not worth to take out. In general, we, we wash from the head. It starts from the head, and um, there it's brought down in Svarim that, which is surprising. When I say surprising, because practically you don't see this implemented, not to put water in the mouth. That water shouldn't go into the mouth. When you're washing somebody, I mean, how does that happen? You're washing someone who's lying on a table, face up. Uh, well, obviously, it can be face up. It's a big thing that it shouldn't be face up. It's it's terrible design if it's not face up. Uh, and, you, and you work very hard that you should it even and a lot of people get scared because when you turn a nifter to the side to wash the backside or to be exposed to the backside so you know you're scared that it's going to fall over but so a lot of times they're very squeamish they're not to put them too much because god forbid the worst thing is that the, the, the nifter should be on his face that's the worst the worst thing so so a lot of times when you're training someone in heavy condition they're so scared to turn it because oh my goodness it's going to fall forward so uh, so uh, that, that would be like that's the cardinal thing of the no-nos so the idea of not putting water in the mouth is uh, the research that I did is the idea was that it's not so bad that the I don't want to say it in a bad way put it this way the bottom line is after all when you're putting the halbar when you're putting tachrichim you shouldn't have water in his mouth so in other words if you had to wash the mouth up because there was bile and there was dirt and there were things coming out which is very very common so I saw a certain chavik yiddishas that just stuffed the mouth with gauze and but it doesn't work perfectly because the gauze gets you know if you if the head is not elevated 100% um, to 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 uh, to a big de a de big degree that it's higher than the heart you know the bile is going to come out so it's going to slow it down but it could it could mess up the, the, you know, first of all, the, the, the bile comes out and goes into a person's beard, and it goes into the, then, then it will go into, uh, onto tachichim. So, what we do is, we try, we, we try to wash the person outside as, as, as best as possible, take away all the chetzitzes, and we do that very, very strongly. And we make sure that there is no water in the mouth after the tahara before you put on a put. So there's ways to take out the water. There's ways to take out the person's bile in the mouth. Um, you do it with a suction, with a, with a reverse suction of a, of a, of a, of a needle, a, a, larger, a larger needle. Okay. The, the, during the tahara, and during the entire, when I say the word tahara, in in the, the entire duration, there are two places that are covered. Always. The bris kredish, as well as the face. Uh, the bris kaidish is because of tzniyas, of the person shouldn't be embarrassed for himself, and it's also, uh, but the face is a little bit of a different reason. The face is not because of bizoyin, 
uh, the faces for the people who are doing the tahara. It's brought down that it, it's kosher l'shik, it, it weakens your eyesight. Um, so it's not, uh, so th that's, and it's also, it says you shouldn't be, you shouldn't, it didn't say you shouldn't see, look at a per it says you shouldn't look, a stockless, you shouldn't look at a, at a nifter's face. Uh, not that you can't see it, but it shouldn't uh, you gaze. It's almost like you have in Hichas, uh, in, in Ishas, in Hichas, the, the idea of a stockless or seeing, um, that's a different shear, but I'm saying, you know, what, what, what category, but, so when a guy, you come in and you see a, a dead person's face, it doesn't mean you have to turn your head, it means you're not supposed to study the person face. It gets a little bit tricky um, when you have to wash the face and there, let's say there's some uh, wound or there's a dirt and there's uh, which uh, the head a lot of times that's where the blood is, blood comes out of the nose and the you know, mouth and the ears uh, or that's an ordinary what happens if the person had a, a, a stitches or whatever it is uh, that you have to wash and clean so when you're looking to make sure that it's it's clean so you, you you're, you're actually you train yourself that you're not looking at the person's face you're looking at at what you're washing, so it's it's kind of like you're zoning in. So you're not looking at the face; you're looking at the at the particular inch or two that you're trying to wash. So it's a it's a, it's a, it's a different uh, category. Okay, so just you know, because some people say, no, you can't look at the face. You have, you have to look at the face. You have to, you have to, not stare. You have to look at the face to be able to wash the face and to know. Okay. When you, wa um, you of course you close the eyes and there's, it's brought down, you gotta close the mouth. Now that's a technical problem. Um, and you ask people in different kind of dishes, they don't like to talk about it too much because practically speaking, if the person passes away and the per it's something called rigor mortis, which is uh, stiffens the body and the person has no more elasticity and the person's mouth is open and you're coming 10 hours later, 10 hours is uh, quite fast today's day and age. And most of the time, we're in that range. You know, it's not uh, 24 hours or later. You know, if a person dies, uh, you know, today, unfortunately, is on the sign, it shouldn't be. But uh, the, 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 tomorrow morning would be the, the, the tahara. So you're talking about sometimes it could go around 12, 15 hours, and if it's in the refrigerator, it's going to be very stiff. How are you closing the mouth? You're not closing the mouth. It, it, you, I've been around that they try to push it and close it and try. And some chaver gedishas actually tie the mouth, tie the head with a, with a, with, with a, a piece of tachrichim and that they, they may try to make a knot. Every time I've witnessed this, it does not work. It does not work because it's not like elastic rubber band that you can actually, you, you, if you make a tourniquet, like you use it, it would, but you're going to, it's on the person's head. We don't do that. So it's, it's a, not a wishful thinking. You try your best. And if the mouth is open, the mouth is open. You can't, you're not, you're not, nothing you can do about it. But uh, there are chavik there are certain times even in our chavik that we try to, 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 if we felt that we could, to close the mouth with, with, uh, with making a string out of the chavik, out, out of the tachrichim to close it better. But uh, that's one of the things that, you know, uh, uh, what does it mean that it should be closed? And then practically speaking, most of the times it's not closed. But that's just a fact of the, you know, fact of the, of the anatomy. Um, you wash the right side first, you start, to, like I said, with the head, and then you wash the right side, the left side, and you, you do the same thing throughout the, throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, washing the, the body. There is, um, there is a, a, a phenomenon that was, it's a, again, I think it's a Gemara again, I don't know if, I, I don't know if it's in, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on where exactly, in which, in, I think it's again in Shabbos. There, there was a, correct me for those who finish Shas, uh, the, um, there was a Koyin that, he was a finicky guy, and he, when he ate Kachim, he always put on a glove. You know what I'm talking about? No, that's why I this. Shabbos. Oh, it's talking so. Okay, so it's a good morning, Shabbos. Okay, so um, I know it's Pesachim. I have something else on Pesachim. I, 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 didn't, I wasn't sure. So, uh, how many times Shas you do? I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, um, so he did, and he, and he, he had a, 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 a very uh, t a terrible death. And they attributed it to the fact that he didn't, that he pushed it, used gloves when he was talking, when he did cut him. And I, the, the, we, the, they use it as a, as a, as a covet, that the, that the Kahanan stood knee deep in blood and by carbon Pesach, and it was, it was a schus. 
So when I started in Chavar Gedusha, you had, you had people who did not use gloves. And it happens to be that there is Chavar Gedushas today. The default is everyone uses gloves, due to the fact that uh, it started when AIDS was around in the 80s. Um, that they, when a guy came with a disease, so it got, uh, you know, they, they, they were scared. So they, they, there's a whole, there's actually this, uh, Maisha writes about it, there were, there were truths of, of, of those days that there's a, a Soloveitchik got involved and he got a little controversy because uh, Soloveitchik was, was from Chicago and he wrote and he was a little bit more like, uh, not so Haredi, like the, like the Chesidus he didn't want, and they, they outed him, they wrote uh, articles against him. Now everybody uses gloves. And his idea was, that, listen, it, it, there's diseases, and, there, and, and it's been proven that it's, it's airborne, and it's, I mean, it, it, can, it can get infections and stuff like that, especially if someone has a cut and you touch it, so you should use gloves. Do we have documentation of what they did about gayfists in the past? They did not use gloves. Okay. Uh, the, the, the documentation of the McGaffey is interesting that we they had. They did have uh, the documentation of McGaffey is that, that they, they, they had if they used lime or not. In, in, uh, on top of a nifta, because that, that disintegrated the body. And there was a big rov, a, a big paisik, he said that they, when, he, when if he dies, they should use lime on him. And, they, and so in other words, they, they, he said that it, it, it's good enough. They tried to do that in, 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 um, in Corona. So do you do a tire, not do a tire, what's the protocol? So they went back to that only time that we have in the Megafa that, uh, that had um, in the 1800s, it was in the what was it, when was it, the Black Plague? Um, what about 1918, 1919? Who? 1918, 1919. Ah, uh, the, the, what the Chavik did then? We don't know, but it, but I know that there's chaver kedusha. There's, there's a so when I started chaver kedusha, they didn't use gloves. Most didn't use gloves. These are the old Russian guys, and they did not use gloves. And most of the people who passed away were were anash of tamimim or tamimim tamimim. So you know, it wasn't like these foreign diseases. It's like I'll have a meal today with mitzitzah. You know, how do, if they do, I'm saying mitzitzah. I'm talking about like um, if they do a nash, if they, they make a distinction, if they don't know where the parents were or came from. So there's you know, because today uh, th those days uh, you, did, uh, you knew who he was and you knew that he wasn't uh, didn't have these kind of crazy kind of uh, diseases. I mean, uh, contaminating diseases. Uh, but today, all chaver gedishas use gloves. There's n uh, but I, I witness myself that there is a Chavar Gedisha that I highly regard, and it's very highly regarded. It's, a, it's called Chesed Shalemis. Um, they have Tyre, Tyre Yidin, and there's Chesidish Yidin. All of them that are in there, they're Fatmer, Bob of uh, Kleisenberg. Uh, and and uh, they, some of them, they officially start with gloves, and some, but then you take off a glove. You know, you, uh, you have to take off, uh, if, you have to wash. After your Chitze of the body, before you do the tahara, you ha the chavigdish have to wash their hands. There's another little thing that, so we wash our hands. You wash your hands, everyone washes their hands the way they wash their hands. You wash three times, you wash two times. Uh, I mean, we, we, Lubavitch, we wash the way we wash. Um, but the other chavigdishes, they wash in the tilisadim the way they wash in the tilisadim. There's some chavigdishes that actually wash in the tilisadim on the nifter, chsidisha ones. And we don't do that, and they, they saw that we don't do it, because what do you mean? And Tilsa Daim is for him, he's going to the mikveh, he's going for the Shikab. So whatever, this uh, bottom line is that I've seen personally that, uh, no, and they never got harmed. This mamish, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, an unbelievable thing. I was like shocked that they, 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 they forgot to put on the, the second pair of gloves, because you take him, you're going to do the Shikab, you're touching the, the nifta, you're putting him on clothes. Eh, so half of them forget to put it on, uh, they're doing so many, you know, sometimes they do three or four in, in, in one shot. When I say one shot, one after the other, so they, you know, they're all volunteering, so they're all doing, so, and, they, and some of them forget to put on, uh, I've, even, I've even witnessed, which uh, I, I did a couple myself, but uh, the, 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 just due to time, uh, the, you have to wash your hands, but there's a mikveh. So you just dip your hand in the mikveh three times. That's that's uh, that's good enough. But that water, you know, that water is that water is all the niftar that going in there. You know, they, everything goes into the water. I mean, it's clean. It's a clean goof. But you know, it's not it's not a clean mikveh. You, you look at it, you see. So uh, so I did it uh, under certain conditions and certain times that we were rushing and uh, and, and uh, I did it. But the, the people around me really didn't weren't weren't happy. They weren't appreciative of the fact that I was trying to have such a mysterious nefesh. But um, but uh, to my knowledge, uh, to my knowledge, I know that um, the way I know the people that, that do not did not wear gloves never got sick from this stuff. It's a, it's an interesting thing. I just 
uh, off the record, I know we're on a record, but off the record, uh, that the Hever Gedishas that did Taharis in Corona, there were not many Hever Gedishas that did Taharis in Corona. Uh, I know of two that, that continued doing the Tahara exactly the way they did it before Corona. One was Crown Heights Hever Gedisha, uh, another Hever Gedisha uh, uh, from Chesid Shekraizen, uh, Chesed Shalemis. And there were other Chesid Shekraizen that did not do Taharis, they were scared. And, and their Rabbanim, and their Rabbanim, even our Rabbanim said not to do it. But uh, the Hever Gedisha, we had a couple guys and we just went for it. And not one person got sick from, from Corona, mm -hmm. from doing Taharis and Corona. And we were talking about when people were dying, we were doing five uh, a day uh, at, at, at certain points. And it was, um, we were doing 30, 40 in uh, helping them out. You know, we were there and it was, uh, the Hever Gedishas were intermingled because this guy needed help to schlep. It was, it was wild, it was, it was chaos, it was crazy. But uh, to, I, to my knowledge, the people that were there and we were protected, I was protected, I was the first guy in Kran to come to Kran Heights looking like a zombie and they were looking, they were laughing at me, they said it's not nice, you're walking with a white suit. I actually had a yellow suit which was a, which was a better Tyvek suit, it was a real hazmat suit, but I didn't want to wear this yellow crazy thing in public, uh, they didn't want, so I put on a white one which was a, basically any painter wears this baloney thing, but, uh, but uh, I wore a real one, and, but they didn't want me to wear, uh, to wear it in public, it looked too scary, but I said, I'm, I don't live in Crown Heights, and I, it's a place of, you know, the, it's, it's spreading, and so um, then I, then, uh, then, um, so I, we were by this Taharis that they, 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 they were so busy and they were so involved in this mitzvah that they actually, their, their gloves got torn, their mask broke, and, and this was in, talking about people uh, dying all over the place. And these guys were doing it and, no, and nobody, got, nobody, I, you know, nobody got sick, and, and to all the people that I know. This brings us, I mean, I'm going all over the place, I wanted to focus on the three points, but I'm just digressing. This is to the point, okay, let me just finish, um, let me just finish the idea of the Rechitza. You, you, once you did the Rechitza, there are different minhagim when it comes to cutting nails, cutting hair. We don't do that. And there's actually, there's two minhagim. It's either you do or you don't do. You can't do halfway. So, well, that would also be another minig. But there's, the, and the people who have a minig to cut their, to cut hair and nails, by the way, the hair and the nails do get buried, even those that cut. They say the punt feket, you should, those who don't, it's the terrible. And the people who say not to cut hair or nails during a, 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 during a washing and preparing of, ta, of, a, of a tahara, is like the worst thing that those who do. So it's like very, it's the only, one of the only subjects when it comes to the chavik dishes that you can be polarizing, like that's no good. Most of the times, whatever you do is good, it's your mimic, do it. So it, it, the chsidim, See the Shekraisen, or the Kraisen that we see that we that do, do Taharis that I've, I've witnessed, uh, even Rabbi Zon, when I say even Rabbi Zon, Rabbi Zon is a, a, a tremendous, tremendous uh, individual. He runs the Chavik a national organization for Chavik and he's very, very helpful to a tremendous amount of shluchim. Um, he's, he's, he, he has a Chavik of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, under the Vad of Queens. He runs it. Uh, practically anybody that, has, that, that dies in the, and his Bratik Fura is Israel from Queens all the way deep into Long Island to the end of Long Island. It's, uh, he, he does it to Harris. He, he, covers, he covers that ground. And he's, he's tremendous. He's a tremendous uh, individual and he knows a lot and he, and he did a lot of research and he knows a lot of, uh, a lot of information. He's very accessible. For, and he'll, you call him up and you want to be trained. He'll be, he'll be uh, hopefully he'll be more than happy to, to tell you to come and to, and to watch uh, Taharis. But they, he, do, he does it a little bit different than, than Lubavitch and Minhagen. But he's in the same, he's in the same category. He doesn't, he doesn't advocate, he doesn't follow the cutting the nails or the hair and things like that. What's the two stars in my hair right now? Why is it? You say no, they say no, there's no reason. Yeah. You leave the person. The bottom line is when you're doing when you're doing a rechitza, the rechitza is to wash the person. Like I mentioned, that you shouldn't smell. But there's another reason that there's a whole two guy is that the way a person is born. We say in the shama ta'iri, a person is born knock at the hate and clean. He should go like that. So in other words, you should you should make sure that when he goes back, he goes back to the offer the way he came out, the way he, the way he was created. He wasn't created with chitzitzis. You should take off the chitzitzis. So then chitzitzis become a big a big a big deal for the chitzitzis to take. So he should be buried the way he was born. 
But for the tahara itself, chetzitzes are not me'akev. I don't know if you get the distinction or you see the differences because sometimes you, you, there is a chetzitzes, so it's not the end of the world. You have to do another tahara. So you take the kula of, of both things. Okay. Uh, the, as soon as you wash the, the, you prepare the body for, for, for tahara, tahara meaning tishakabin or mikveh, you wash your hands again. The question if, you, if you're wearing gloves, we take off our gloves and we wash our hands. It gets a little bit uh, uh, difficult because I don't know if you ever put on a plastic glove uh, you, uh, when your hands are wet. So you, wi you wipe your hands. There, it does say that you don't wipe your hands. Practically speaking, I've never seen anybody that doesn't wipe your hands. We know that you, after a lavaya, coming from a, a lavaya, you don't wipe your hands, not even on paper towels. And that reason is given is because you don't want to forget too fast. You don't, you don't want to wipe yourself off from the, from, from the nifter. You want to, you want to, you want to keep, the, keep the sadness. When I say the word sadness, the, 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 the idea that the person passed, you know, you're not, it's, it would be a disrespect to wipe it away like you're finishing the vish kind of thing. So that, but that doesn't apply to a tahar for all practical purposes, not wiping your hands. But it does say not to wipe your hands, but the chavagdish is right. So since everybody's wearing gloves, in order to put on the glove, you wipe your hands. So, uh, and if you're not going to take off your gloves, there's no reason to wash your hands. Uh, you're not washing gloves, uh, you're washing your hands. Um, okay, um, the Tisha Kabin is three buckets. It's, it's, it's more difficult than, than a mikveh. Mikveh is quite simple. You can see, the whole body is under the water. And, uh, and uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, even in Hebrew Kedisha, the body is going to float. Okay, it's not going to sink to the, to the, to the bottom. You're going to say, oh my goodness, you're going to lose the body. You're not losing him in the mikveh, you know what I mean? He's, he's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to float. Um, it's a float. I mean, it, you can push it down, so you don't have to worry, you don't have to hold on to it, because a lot of people who are, who, who are not uh, as, as um, familiar with the haris and, and mikvahs, they, they don't want to leave go, because, oh, the guy's going like, to go all the way to the bottom of the mikveh. It, 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 bodies, bodies float. Um, when you're doing Tisha Kabin, most of you are going to be doing Tisha Kabin if you're involved, unless you're in a Kayin, you're not going to be involved in this uh, whole business. Um, that you're going to go in Arya Sada is only going to be Tisha Kabin. Tisha Kabin is done by three buckets. It's, it's, the, it's the most difficult aspect to, to, the, tahara, to the Tahara process. Because the washing is the washing. Either you know what, you do, what, what to take out, what not to take out. Okay, you'll, that, that, that you'll have uh, you know, people who are, who, are, who are more familiar now, but, but, but Tisha Kabin, you have to start with the three buckets, and each, and the, 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 you start from the head, and the, before you finish the pouring the, from the first bucket, the second bucket has to start. It has to be a continuous, continuous flow, and the, the water should be getting all over the person's, the, uh, all over the, per, the goof of the person. Incidentally, when the Rebbe sent um, a letter to Ben Tishemtev, when he wrote a telegram, and he sent it to his wife, he sent it to her, she was in London, and he wrote, Achi be Liverpool mess. That was the, that was the, the, the um, telegram. Now, they didn't have any internet, they didn't have any cell phones, and uh, she, she asked to tell her husband, and the Rebbe wanted to, make sure Benji's going to take care of everything. And it took her a while to, to track him down, because he used to go away. He would say, uh, and he would come back, and he would, you know, have, uh, he would come back whenever he came back. And, uh, and then last night's supper was uh, brought out, and he, so she, had, she didn't know his itinerary. He would take off and come and go. So she found that he was in Ireland. He was in Dublin, Ireland at that time. Well, good. He came, and he got the instructions from the Rebbe what to do. The Rebbe told him they should take five bachrim from, from they learn, were learning in Manchester at that time. And uh, there was not a Lubavitch yeshiva, it was a yeshiva from Rabbi Segel. It was a Litvish yeshiva at that time. Uh, many Lubavitchers came out of that yeshiva. Uh, 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 Dubov was, 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 uh, was uh, taught in that yeshiva. Um, so my father was learning at that time. So the Rebbe picked, the Rebbe chose, there were more than, uh, but the Rebbe chose which Bachim to, to be involved. And my father was one of them. 
and they went and, and who was in the Chavik Gedisha? Dubov. As a matter of fact, Dubov's son was in the Chavik Gedisha over here as well. Uh, he was a sheikhet. Um, so, but uh, Yitzchak Dubov was in the Chavik Gedisha. And so they said, he, he knows what he's doing. So you have to, so he came along and with the Bachram. The Bachram had no clue. They were 15, 17, 18. And, um, and they, so one of the things was is that they, 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 when they did the Tahara, so they did Tushakabin, because that's what they, that's, that's what it is. And, Benji was there, and he wasn't in Chavik Edisha per se, but, but he felt that, uh, that, that, that maybe it didn't, didn't work 100%. And he said that Mishka Gosson punked, uh, he felt that one part, I think it was by the, a little bit by the hand, whatever it was, that didn't get the water, the way he thought. And the Dubov said, uh, this is inside the information, I don't think anybody, this was never ever told publicly. Uh, at least not by my father, and uh, the only one I know that uh, that speaks that spoke it uh, speaks about it. So they ever so so uh, Dubov says yeah yeah yeah, and there was an, there was a, there was the rov. Interesting enough, over twenty somewhat years later, the the, the, the rov's son, this rov's son, you know the one that ever wrote letters to that they should write back to his mother, the Rebbe wrote to uh, to a rov in Liverpool, and uh, this rov's son came to the Rebbe. Uh, for dollars, and the Rebbe said, "Oh, I want, and now I'm going to use the opportunity to thank you for helping." So, so many, the Rebbe, and the guy was amazed how the Rebbe, you know, waited to show a curse type that he helped him uh, on this on the letter cover up. So this Rebbe was there, and the Rebbe was also on the chavik dishes. So he said, "No, no, no, it was good, it was good, it was good." They brought the, the, the Rebbe's brother to London. And at that time, they, they, they were supposed to be, they were supposed to go on a plane and end up going on a, sh on a ship. Got some ISIS, so it was in my Zayda's house. Uh, my Zayda lived in London. He was actually, uh, for the first six months, uh, the first Lubavitcher to own a house in London was my Zayda. And the shul was in my Zayda's house in, uh, for the first six months until they were able to get where the Chabad house is right now, we're in Stamford Hill. So he was, uh, he was there, and the Rebbe asked, out of nowhere, he asked Benji, uh, the tire was okay? So the Benji said, "Okay, that's we got to do it again." In other words, in other words, the Rebbe had gefragt, punkt von alle Sachen. The Rebbe wanted to know if the Tisha Kav one. So he felt it was, uh, it was. Uh, he asked about the Tisha Kav. That's right away. Benji says, "You see, I told you." Well, like, so whatever they left. Uh, just, uh, just interesting that the one thing that Rebbe asked, so not gefragt, was how did it was it was did it go? Okay. Um, so getting back to what we're talking about. I don't have too much time. What do we have? When, when is this over? Oh. Okay, so what happens is that after, after Tisha Kabin, it used to, you go to, you go to certain Chavik dishes. I know, I know Wisconsin. The Shliach went there, he was a classmate of mine, and he got involved in Chavik Dishes, and he calls me up because he's crazy. I don't know what's going on. The first they hired, they asked me to come, and there was an old, there was old, uh, old Chavik Dishes, Orthodox Chavik Dishes. And they, they said, I never saw this. That they took the nifter and they do Tisha Kav and they, one guy holds it, stand them up. You stand up the guy, the nifter, you stand them up. And one guy hold, bear hugs them and then they put a kash on the bottom so the feet can get wet as well. And the magister advasa. And this guy went nuts. He goes, you're doing it wrong. He called up right away. I, That's how they used to do Tadis. They used to, because it's the easiest way to do it. You pour it on the head. I'm showing it on myself just for demonstration purpose. And the water goes down. But if you put a person on, on a, on a Zaldbrettel, you know, on a, on a perforated uh, a board, uh, your Tisha is going to be a little bit harder because you have to, like, you make sure that, you know, all the limbs get it. So that's, but it's, it's, uh, it's a hard thing to do to stand someone up. First of all, you have to be very strong to hold them. And you have to be ready to get wet. You know, because you're going you know, to get wet when, when you're kind of holding them up. So even if you have two people, so it looks funny, it sounds funny, but many, many Chavik Edishas still do that. Not in New York, not in New York, because here you have Hoys and Mices, but Chavik uh, in, 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 in different, I know, like I'm saying, like in Wisconsin, they do this, that's what they do. They're trying to change it now, they, they, they're coming with modernization by bringing the, the Shleich brought a, a board the, the way they do it over here, but so w when you're seeing different Minhagim, don't say, oy vey, it's terrible, it's, it's it's, it's, it's the end of the world. The, the, this is how it is. After... To get every single one. Correct. Like you do Natil Sadaim. You know how you do it, right? You do Natil Sadaim? You ever practice... Uh, how can you use the hose? Much easier. How can you use Kayla? That's a good question. Uh, the, 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 the reason why we use 
uh, buckets, first of all, you know that it's, uh, you know that you know that you have tisha kabin. You know the amount of water you use. And if you go into Kail Chaluch, Kail Chabad, you can use a take a shower. What does it say, everybody, Yom Kippur? You ever read that one? Uh, nobody, nobody likes to read this one because it's going to put the mikvahs out of business. But it says over there, if you can't get to a mikvah or if you have a technical problem, you take a three and a half to five minute shower. It's brought down a Kail Chabad, Luch, Kail Chabad, and the Erev Yom Kippur, right? right? You, know, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, because, what do you know? Is it, is it, um, there is, there is, there was a, 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 a there was a funeral home here called Shemer Achaimis, it's out of business, what? Pressure. pressure, amount of water, whatever, you know, and, 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 and um, the, the, um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I mentioned earlier that there was, there was, uh, the, the Tahara, they did it with 42 buckets. The Emes the Tahara, they're talk I'm talking about, the, but today we do it with three. And, and, and like the old and the, the shining when they, when they were there. So in every limb had another, 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 another posuk. So they did it with 42 buckets. It's a lot more water than, 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 than Tisha Kabin. But uh, just, uh, so they, they, what they did was not a mikveh. They did something very interesting. They wanted Tisha Kabin because for people who don't want a mikveh. And it was Shreem so they're, they're out of business uh, to a great degree. And they had this excellent, it was an excellent idea. And we, we used it a couple times, uh, that they had this box. And it was filled with Tisha Kab, and it was filled with, 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 uh, with, um, with the amount of water that you need. And it was under the bed. You, you would put the bed, you would put the meat, the, 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 the table under it, and you would pull, like uh, anyone in Europe, you know, you flush, you would pull this thing, and, the, and it would just rain down one shot, and that was it. It was it was a lot easier. So it was it was an interesting uh, idea, and then I took it from Belgium. That they had it in Belgium. He, uh, that's uh, this guy who made the made it. He, he's a he's a very nice guy, and he f he does the cheapest funerals, uh, graveside funerals in Erla And he, incidentally, uh, many times I see him by the oil. He comes to Davin. He's a some Dalanga vice about and he's a he's a fine yid. And uh, he came here, tried to open a business, but the, the business uh, didn't go very well. He has, different, in other words, the sh the, what he tried to do was uh, was open up a, a, a competition with the others, and and, and it didn't work. So um, he has that. He had that 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 pretend. The halbosha of of tachrichim. The tish yeah. comes to get to the back also. Yeah, automatically, if the body is going to be raised because it's on a perforated pieces of wood, and we tell shluchim a lot of times, shluchim call me and they say, "Well, we don't have the, these these kind of um, these kind of." Um, so you take you take a couple two by fours, and you can just put it on the slats. You can you can put it on the on the, it raises the body uh, the, uh, an inch or two. If it's two inches, it's going to be two inches above the. Uh, so there's it's like a it's like a uh, you ever kasha the chicken? You ever salted a chicken? You know, you, there's a board, a perforated board. So they have. They, you can. It's the body's on such a board that the wa the water can go under. The, can go also. On, it goes. Sure that the water gets everywhere. It goes. If you put water on on someone that has that's elevated from the table by a couple of things, the water is going to go around his body. It's going to go on his back. If you're pouring it, if you're pouring water. I'm showing it on myself just for demonstration. If you pour water over here. It's going to go and uh, it's going to go, go on the back. Uh, uh, you go, you pour backwards. I, I, I saw myself the Rebbe pouring mashke that way. I saw. I forbring the Rebbe poured mashke. I don't know if it was a. Uh, I remember when when the Rebbe gave uh, his white handkerchief to a guy, and the guy said, "I can name cave, uh, I was there. It was some So I don't know. If, <laughs> I'm not saying that's a joke. But I'm saying you know you don't know what the Rebbe is in Yonim, but I'm saying in general we, people don't pour backwards because they do that by a tahara. We do that. And, and you do it. You do it. You do it. A bucket and you turn it sideways. So you're not pouring it this way, you're pouring it this way. It's a little bit uh, interesting. If you had no, that's the, it's not, it, it, that, that, that patent is the water goes on, a, it's like a mikveh. It's, no, no, if you're pouring water, you do it that way, if you're pouring. When you're washing, so when you're washing the body, so you need to have water on top, so one person washes, or if you if you're, know what you're doing, you can have one hand with the, with the, with the bucket, with, the, with a quart, it's not a quart, it's like a, it's like a, 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 a pot, a single-handed uh, pot, and you can, and you, so it's hard, because it's easier to wash with one hand and you go this way, but that's why you have the second person pouring, he always pours sideways. 
Um, What's the measurement? Of what? What is it? Five, five gallons, five and a half gallons? What is it? Five, uh, like, uh, what is it? Five and a half gallons, if I'm not mistaken. I don't, don't quote me, I can look it up. But it's, I think it's equivalent to about five and a half gallons or something like that. Why do you use pouring backwards? Uh, it's also by the tire, it's only by the tire, also by the chitza. It's by the chitza, the, 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 by, by the chitza when you're washing. When you're washing. The, the, let me just, let me just um, wrap this up a little bit because we're running out of time. The halbosha of, of tachrichim are, most tachrichim that you're going to find are the same style. It's the same, they have a hat, uh, they have, uh, they, uh, all the things are pr practically the same, almost all the chavrik dishes. Anywhere you go in the world, they have the same, the same um, uh, amount of things. Uh, that every Chavik Dishi uses. There, unfortunately now, you have, it's prevalent that, that, that you have polyester tachrichim or 100% uh, linen. So the linen is obviously going to be more expensive. Rabbi Zon gives two options. He gives the more expensive one or the, or the, the mix, the, 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 the polyester mix. Um, but in Crown Heights Chavik Dishi, we use a linen and it's, it's, uh, it's prepared by ladies Chavik Dishi son. And there's um, the tefiris that we do are to make a shin that we tie. Everything we do is three knot, three uh, three uh, three knots, three twists. Uh, other chaver gedishas don't. They're not mak. They do two. They do two loops. On our, whatever I'm saying, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but I, just for time wise, it's not going to for demonstration purposes. It's not not a gay anyways. So um, the the idea that you have small in interesting nuance. Montreal the Babach they take there is there is a pillow there's a pillow made from tachir, made part of the tachrichim that the person's head rests on the on it on it's a small little thing Montreal they what they do I saw this myself they take the earth from the caver to fill up that sacket to fill the, it's 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 about this big it's it's like a it's like a crown royal bag. You ever said remember the old crown royal bags? So it's the same uh, same size, not the a gallon and a half one. You know the cheaper one, and uh, and so they fill it up with. By us, we don't do that. We put cash. We put cash in it. It's same same of average heavy condition. And it happens to be came uh, it came from almost the same places. We came from the same places in Russia, and uh, half of the, a lot of people that were in heavy condition in Montreal that came here to heavy condition. And uh, but uh, why? What, who's doing something wrong or right? It's, that's how this is what they did. This is how they were macabre from when they started. And so uh, no one's doing anything wrong. It's just, these are no, and whatever you do, you continue doing the way it is. You don't change it. The, the, I, I just want to conclude. Um, I just, ra I, I mean, and then you have, and then, um, and then you have uh, um, idea that, that you have something that you take egg, the egg white and vinegar or, or, or wine uh, and, and you put it on the forehead, you put it on the cheeks, on the eyes, put it on the lave, on the briskaydish. This is done, this, not all Hever Kedishas do this. It happens to be in New York, most Hever Kedishas that are involved are Hasidish people. They still do this. This has to do practically, it had to do with a minute that started when the Yidin were all buried, the same process, and they didn't know who was a Yid to be a Simon, to push it, if you open up and you see who's a yid, it's the egg white, the egg and the smell of the vinegar is very telling. You can tell a yid if that's a yid or not. So that was like a sign they put it, it was like a marker. I, today, we don't have that. But there's a, obviously there's a more, you say this, like spiritual reasons that we still do it. I'm not, I'm not into that. I, I don't know uh, the, the exact reason why, the Kabbalistic reasons why that is done, but we, we still do it with many heavy dishes that don't do it. The Litvish guys don't do it that much because uh, the Minik fell apart uh, in, by them. Uh, but uh, but the guys still do it. <coughs> is, is it the end of the world if it's done or not done? Uh, you know, you do your best. There are many Shilas that we didn't go into about uh, today's day and age. Just going to give you a little bit of a, a food for thought. What happens if there's a, a guy that, was, that uh, had a transformation? And he decided that he wants to be a woman, or a woman that transformed and wants to be a man. Uh, when a person, such a person dies, who does the who does the tahara? 
Is it a man? Is it a woman? How does that work? So this, what, what's a shaila? What's a shaila? If a guy is born a man, but he has a varim of a woman, is it is it sneers? Is it is it is, do we say he's a man as I go on and the Chavik just uh, have have a have a, what practically is and, and anatomically he physically looks like a woman he has all the avarim of a woman how does that work so this Shaila was uh, I don't think it's brought down in the Shulchan Aruch because I don't think the Rama had such questions uh, or or things like that and it happens to be that these questions are being asked right now thank God in Crown Heights in the Chavik we don't have such questions yet um, uh, but but there are such questions and there's such questions that I had to deal with myself in, 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 in my shlichus and things like that so the 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 practic the practical way of spe of, of, of it is that inter interesting as an ungenomen that and a lady can do a what happens if you're in Arya Asad I'm just giving you an extreme I'm, I'm, I'm you have to speak to someone on a case by case basis but what happens if there's a man that dies, and you, only ladies are there for chavikdish, and you have the only chavikdish you have is the, that are available are three ladies, four ladies, but it's a man. Ladies can do a, a, a tahara on a man better than a man doing a tahara on a lady. A, 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 a man should never do a tahara on a lady. Never. A lady can do a tahara on a man. And so therefore, they took this idea, they took this idea that when a man, when a, if, a, if a human being changed genders, leave that to the lady Chavik In other words, if it's, a, if it's a man that changed to a lady, or, if a, or, or half changed, or whatever it is, the ladies Chavik should get involved. So you throw it to the ladies, so let them have that trauma. No, but I'm just giving you that. I just want to end with uh, just uh, now. Now uh, there there are many different aspects of of. Uh, there's some chaver that do uh, that it says it says that the body has to be covered at all times. Uh, I've seen Rabbanim give out shuvas and on, online or even on, on, on a Zoom. Uh, the guy never was by tahara. He he was like saying he, he what does one rav? I don't want to out him, but he's from YU. Yeah, they, uh, he was supposed to be a guy with kind of good learning, and he's supposed to, and he was a, he was a guy that made Ruf Tzachab, and he, he had the Shaila, so he had the Shaila, and he started answering that, uh, no, it's not Sneers, a man should be by a man, and a lady should be by a lady, and if he was born a man, the man should do it. How do you do it? His aide says, you do, you, you do it with a sheet. You don't... <laughs> the guy practically was never by a Tahara. It's impossible. What do you mean? You're taking people's clothes off. It says you have to get dressed under, under, the, under, under a blanket. You know, technically, uh, but really. So you have to go to a Rav that understands technically how does, how do you, how does it work. So this guy, in theory, he said, oh, I can answer with the Shaila. But practically, you look at him, the guy is out to lunch. So, um, okay. So I just want to end with this. The, the, when the Fidik Rebbe was here, the, the Rebbeim were always the Rosh HaGabayim. When the, when the, when the, when the Fidik Rebbe made the Chavik Gedisha, a good Chabad of Crown Heights, of, of not Crown Heights, as I'm making a distinction, it's not of Crown Heights, it's of Lubavitch. Uh, and um, they serviced the community of Crown Heights. Um, the, they wanted the first, the first, um, the first meal at the, at the inauguration, they wanted the Fidik Rebbe to come. I want to, the Rebbe says he wasn't well. He's gonna he's, he should, he's gonna give a letter. He's gonna give a letter that his father wrote, uh, Maimer, for Vasisi Madi Chesed Chesed Viyames, and it's a letter. It's printed in Nigris. And uh, it happens to be that uh, once a year the Chavik Yiddish gets together at least once a year and, um, and they, they go over the Takanis, they go over uh, training and things like that and update things. So we are, they always read and the Chavik Yiddish over here always reads that the Maimer to begin with. They open up with the Maimer because that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the Shtatvas of the Rebbeim. Uh, always was, you know, from, from the time of the Alter Rebbe, uh, how he got to be the Magids uh, holding the head, which was the most important part because uh, he had, uh, interesting enough, I'm digressing, but uh, I have a minute or two, by the, by the Alta Rebbe, they, 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 they had a, a din teire. The Talmudim wanted to do the Tare, and the Chavigdisha said, we're Chavigdisha. <laughs> when it comes to the, when it comes to the, 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 the Magid, we're not gonna have, we, we get the schus. When we do an ordinary, and we want to have the schus to do a tzaddik. So they won. The only one that was able to go in the part of Chavik Yiddish because the Alter Rebbe was already part of Chavik Yiddish, so he was a Talmud that went, and he ended up getting him by Alpi the whole you know you know that part. Um, 
in, uh, uh, before I really, really finish, um, all, all that we have from the Ari HaKadosh was by Reb Chaim Vital. Reb Chaim Vital wrote everything down, right? That's how we have. He told his son, when he died, that they should bury all the Ksavim with him. They buried it. So we wouldn't have anything from the Ari Zal. His son went, after two weeks, and dug it back up. And he said he made it, he, even though his father told him to bury it, so everything we have now is, uh, you know, not that it's all central. <laughs> so, so I'm just, so to conclude, in the mimer of, of, uh, that I mentioned, from the, uh, that, that, from the, from the Rebbe Shab, it mentions there that the, the idea of what's the, be, what's the highest form of a mitzvah is chesed shalemes. And he goes into the detail, and I'm extremely brief, is because every mitzvah opens up a tziner lamayla. You do a mitzvah, if you do it with enthusiasm, you do it with kavana, you get the reciprocal, you get the lefiarech, right? You, you, get the, you get mirror image. The one mitzvah that is going to be higher than anything, higher than any kind of uh, a reward, is chesed shalemis, because you're not going to. There's no reward in that. There's no reward for, for that mitzvah. So you're opening up yourself to a bleak vul level of reciprocation. So that's why in the Gemara it's brought down, and he, he's going to tell. You, I, I don't know your name uh, offhand, but uh, he's going to tell you which Gemara it is. That there was a there was a there was a Eden Rish, There was a time of a plague. There was a pandemic. And there was one particular individual that wasn't scared of this plague, and he didn't die in that plague. And everybody else was fly flying away and dying, and it was terrible. And he, he was walking around immune. He, uh, he, he took the vaccine. Uh-oh, or he didn't, whatever. So, uh, so they asked him, what, they investigated, well, how did this guy, everybody, was, everybody got affected by this, by this devil, and this kind of, so it came out to be, the schus was, he lent the Hever Gedisha a shovel. He lent the Hever Gedisha a shovel to be Mekavar Mason. That's why he was saved from this devil. So, when, so this is what the Fiddik Ever writes. So the, 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 the spiritual reasons why Hever Gedisha is so, such a holy thing, such a high thing, is this is one of the only mitzvahs that you can actually access a level of, 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 of from Lamaila that is not reciprocal. It's completely on a different realm. So uh, I want to end with this, that, uh, that um, the whole purpose of what we do, Chavar uh, Gedisha, is to remind ourselves that this Nifter is a Kaddish, and this Nifter is made in the, in the image of the Ebishter, and this Nifter has to be as, as goof, and that's why we wash every single limb. That's another reason I didn't get into it because time's up, that every limb, it was a sinner for a mitzvah. So that washing has to prepare for the reward of that mitzvah. And when is that reward? We know the mimer from, uh, from, uh, from the Rebbe, right? From uh, uh, which mimers? The Rav in Tchis HaMesim, that the idea that, uh, that the, uh, the, the goof was a vehicle for mitzvah, and that's why when Mashiach comes, it will be resurrected, there will be Tchis HaMesim, and the Shem will come back into the goof. So what we do for the nifter is preparing him for that time. And we should have it speedily in our days, and we shouldn't know from any of these things.